friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a hypermature morganian cataract with faecolytic glaucoma the patient presented to us yesterday with intraocular pressure of 46 mm of mercury with anti glaucoma medications the pressure has come down today to 22 mm of mercury and we have taken up this case for surgery by this time the main incision has been made and on site port has been made on the left side of the main incision and now an air bubble is injected beneath this air bubble trypan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule and now the dye is washed out using a 23g simco cannula and bss and now the anterior chamber is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose and now a side port is made on the right side of the main incision about 3 clock hours away and now is the most important step as we make a puncture on the anterior capsule if there is wrinkling of the anterior capsule that means jonule is weak but it was not like that in this case as soon as the anterior capsule has been punctured there is a gush of milky fluid and without converting the cut into a small plexus the milky fluid is aspirated yes it can be done and the capsule will not run to periphery in hypermature morganian cataract we can aspirate the milky fluid through the incision without doing a mini rexus Uh, after aspirating the milky fluid visco is injected to fill up the anterior chamber in this case it has been applied over the corneal epithelium also and now with the help of uh, utrita forceps i am going to do a, a rexis of about 5 mm because i don't want to go to periphery because the jonular fibers then may get entangled in the path of this rexis so this is a small rexis of about 5 mm it may be even 4.75 mm if the rexis is small we can easily implant a ctr also if it is necessary but in this case it was not required jonule appears okay it doesn't appear weak in this particular case and now the feco needle is introduced with its bevel down and with bevel down itself it goes through the substance of the nucleus towards the opposite equator as it reaches near the opposite equator a nice crack is made and here is another crack and i find that this nuclear fragment is free i subdivide this nuclear fragment into two smaller pieces and i decide to emulsify it now itself because if i leave it it may run here and there it may even hit the posterior surface of the cornea that is corneal endothelium and thus it can damage some cells of the corneal endothelium so i decide to emulsify this quadrant now itself and now i go through this 
hemineucleus and try to make a crack here but it was not a good crack hold it again and now I get a nice crack but this space is not free however I decide to tilt the whole remain remaining nucleus and start emulsifying this I call this tilt and it as we tilt the nucleus like this the equator which is on resting on the posterior capsule is actually protecting the posterior capsule it will not allow the posterior capsule to come forward so this is a nice technique to tilt the nucleus and start emulsifying and if it doesn't tilt then another idea is keep on pace over the posterior capsule and any free nuclear fragment emulsify it over the piece which is uh, lying over the posterior capsule again I have tilted this piece and I am emulsifying the portion which is at the level of the anterior capsule at the plane of the anterior capsule and now is the most important part this small piece if I try to emulsify there is a high chance that I may catch the posterior capsule even with low vacuum so I inject visco and come out the idea of injecting visco is I do not want to allow this piece to come forward and hit the corneal endothelium so I inject visco and come out and now I push this piece towards 6 o'clock and you can see the bag very nicely and now I inject some more visco and then implant an intraocular lens this is a hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens the leading haptic has gone into the capsular bag and here it is the trailing haptic has also gone into the capsular bag and now it is absolutely safe hundred percent safe to emulsify this last piece the eye will will act as a beautiful platform over which we can emulsify this last piece so this is a very safe technique and I recommend this for all my colleagues in case of hypermature morgagnian cataracts yes if we don't do this in many cases we will not cause rent but in some cases there is a chance that you will catch the posterior capsule and cause a rent but if you use the eye wheel as a scaffold there is no chance of catching the posterior capsule so this is uh, foolproof 100% foolproof way of emulsifying the last piece and now the side ports are closed by hydrating corneal stroma on either side of the stab wounds and this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber all the visco is removed and then the anterior chamber is nicely formed and the case is concluded thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy.
and great surgical competence. Always take extreme safety measures for your patients.